Hello everyone, welcome to another weekly market review. Today is the 8th of June 2020. We have had all time highs in multiple sectors in the US markets. There are a lot of interesting data points, so let's have a look at them. The total market cap chart. So what we can see is we have a breakout of three weeks of consolidation, but essentially we have been in this within this zone on the total market cap chart since the end of April. And we have had a weekly close higher than this big weekly level that was holding price down. This 260 level that was holding price down has been broken up of but we have had a strong rejection from a higher resistance. So you can see we have a trio of pretty big resistance right here, especially this 300 uh, quarterly level, but also this consolidation that we made before the big drop. So if you look at the weekly time frame, this weekly block right here, this is very evident because you know you look at the kind of reaction that we got from it so the stronger the reaction we do get from a consolidation the more significant it is on the way back so you know this is a very significant level for the crypto market and for us to be bullish it's very essential to price to start closing above here so that is one of the primary reasons that we have had quite a strong reaction from here let's go to the lower time frames so on the daily you can see basically last week our plan was to manage risk from this level and the other thing was to catch a breakout play the breakout play was to do with BTC and essentially we did get a breakout play we got a good reaction from that but since we the relevance of the level that I was talking about, we did end up getting a strong wick, which nonetheless was um, it was absorbed. So what we have done since then is um, get a clearer picture on the four hour. So basically, this is the shape we were looking at. And if we just pull out a shape from here. So what we've done is uh, we've made another impulse. We have broken out of this consolidation. And for now, this is just a correction. You know, it's come down to the 618 retrace and we bounced out of there. And yesterday we made another 618 retrace of this uh, yeah of this bounce you know so for now what i would say is that uh, this does look like it is more likely to hold because we are getting good reactions there is absorption uh, but nonetheless the good places to manage risk <clears throat> first of all for now for a lower time frame it is this 262 level if price is going to come back down here but what do you want to understand is that if this was um if this was the first leg out for the for the beginning of the next impulse then what we've done is we made the leg we made a correction and for now on the four hour time frame we have also made a higher high okay so how you can look at this higher high just in terms of price action is that we have yeah so we have a lower lower high and a lower low and what we've done is we've broken up so we've broken this high that made the low so we have a higher high and what we would be looking for is a lower low you know so you want essentially this 265 level to not get taken out on a closing basis but you know you just don't want any lows below 261 for this to be legitimate and it, we should also pull up a fib and look at significant levels where we should be managing risk so if we look at the on a closing basis 
I think this uh, somewhere around this 268 level, if price is strong, if price is aggressive, this 268 level should hold and we should get a retrace. We can get about a 0.5 retrace and essentially even a week down lower to this 265 level. But that if, if price is strong, if price is aggressive, which this bullish engulfing candle is suggesting, then these are the retraces that you should be looking at. And these are essentially the two levels that you should be looking at for price to hold. If not, then this would be printing something else which would uh, lead to uh, another consolidation. And it would suggest that price does need more time here to build some other structure. But for now, if if this was the impulsive move out of this one month consolidation, then this is a legitimate retrace, a 618 retrace. And if this is all the retrace we are going to get, and this is the first move out of a new leg, then this are the levels that have to hold that the current levels that we printed on uh, Sunday, Sunday evening, they should be holding. So for that, this is the lower time frame game plan should be looking at uh, this 0.5 retrace possibly a week for it to hold or if we are very aggressive then even the 382 you know so if we look at the order blocks this is what is a significant block right here sorry yeah so this is a significant block right here and essentially this should be holding on a closing basis if price is very aggressive you know so what you should be doing is uh, watch for the retrace guys in case you're not already in and find a place to manage risk if what i would say is if this is um, going to head out then we should not be making a lower low from here but if we are on higher time frames Still, I think this monthly pivot is a nice place to be managing risk for the higher time frames. But nonetheless, this total market cap chart is showing what the BTC chart does not a lot of times. And you should be aware of that by now, you know, that this is the chart that holds the key to the crypto market. It still has an edge, guys. We've been using this edge for a long time. If you're not charting this um, consistently and regularly, you are missing out um, another thing that we can be looking at on the daily time frame I have a couple of channels which are also reflecting something significant for the total market cap chart yeah so this is a non-lock channel which is printed from the 2019 highest you can see it's very clean it's been very well respected and what you can see is we have creeped out of the channel we did get rejected from it a couple of times but we have creeped out of the channel and we are consolidating above it so this is pretty significant um, I mean channels are to be respected and if you technically do trade channels the target for breaking out of a channel is the size of the channel itself you know essentially you end up targeting about 400 billion that is the technical target for trading channels but of course this is a higher time frame channel so you do have to understand but nonetheless it's very significant that we have broken out of this one month consolidation currently we are finding support over it and we have broken also broken out of a major channel there's another channel that you can look at this is a log channel actually using log because this is taking price action from quite a high from the all-time highs but you can see i mean i'm zooming out for this but nonetheless you can see that price over here as well we broke out once twice thrice we did not make it but this fourth time we have broken out and we are currently finding support above this channel as well so these are two major channels for vtc of course um, I mean on the log it's hard to pull this out and replicate it but if we just do this with a trend line the target for this channel uh, almost takes us uh, close to this yearly open again it's a similar target 
sorry last time we had a target of close to 400 we have a target of 500 billion for this channel breakout trade so these are two significant channels i think uh, they are very relevant to what is happening essentially the big big downtrend that we have had since the since the top in 2018 uh, that is what price is finally starting to negate you know and basically trend lines and channels guys you know i mean though they can be used very usefully and very technically most of all what is it is suggesting it is an indicator of momentum so the momentum to the downside has now been negated with over this path of 2 years you know so it's it's very significant in that sense and uh, um in a sense also very positive so this is what we're looking at that is what our low time frame game plan should be for the total market cap and uh, even though we have had a strong rejection from what is very big resistance above um, price is still holding up you know and it is positive what i would say is that it is only this lower levels i will just show you another very significant thing on the total market cap it is about where on a higher time frame price has found support you know so this is since we broke out into this range you know if you look there's two significant levels right here one is this one where we've had a long consolidation okay this is much lower but for now i think we should leave this out and the other significant level is this one where we've had a long period of support so this 240 and 225 this is these are the two big levels that price has found support you know for a decent period of time this like 3 or 4 months of consolidation here 2 or 3 months of consolidation here so these are really big levels and for cryptocurrencies i would only be concerned if these levels which have been reclaimed are lost you know and for a higher time frame i would say that if we do end up breaking up and breaking out from here what we should be looking at eventually is for price to find support at either of these two levels if we do get a bigger correction but for now i mean essentially if this is not where the big correction has to happen because i would say guys a big correction would need at least a 0.5 retrace so a 0.5 retrace currently from where we are right now would make us lose these two key consolidation levels so this is another thing that is making me lean towards a higher move so that at least the 0.5 correction is able to be somewhere where we end up getting um we end up finding support on either this 225 or either this 240 level you know which at the very least would essentially mean that we should you know at least challenge something around these levels this 3 325 330 levels so that the 0.5 retrace can at the very least find support over here you know you can wick down to 2 to 10 to 15 but not close below 225 so this is something that also makes me lean to another move higher before we get a bigger correction because the market is not going to go straight up guys even though it has this whole while we will end up having big corrections on the way you can see that right here we went really really high but you know we did have big corrections on the way they are shake outs they are ways to take out over leveraged people and you know for new participants to enter on higher time frame so for now uh, the market looks good lower time frames i have given you a game plan for that and i've given you a logic for why <coughs> potentially we should be looking at higher levels before a bigger retrace on cryptocurrencies here's the altcoin market cap a quick look we were looking at this 90 billion level you know this big structure that made this move down we have closed another week above it alts have been in a slightly stronger than btc while btc has been going sideways so it has reflected pretty well on this chart this is essentially the level which we were looking at to be managing risk you know so essentially if you if you were looking for that we ended up getting a 
nice test of this before we ended up moving up uh, essentially apart from that the plan remains the same as the total market cap chart so i would not go too deeply into it but still nonetheless very clean uh, uh, complex head and shoulders nice retest we were looking at a possibility either coming down before up but that breakout play brought us back in and uh, we are again consolidating before building something else so uh, the plan remains the same as the total market cap chart something significant that i can show you which is slightly different on this chart is this uh, trend line on the adx you know this is a very long term trend line since the jan highs which has been respected pretty well we have three touches and you can see that we are pretty close to reaching the end of this and you know the adx is signifying there's a potential for this consolidation to take shape and break out of here so this is something different for the altcoin market cap chart and apart from that our plan should remain the same as what we discussed on the total market cap so here's a look at alts against btc and what we have is a, a bullish Joe Shox fork and uh, essentially what you should be looking for also first this trend line and this big level we spoke about last time this monthly level you can see how long it has held price down every time we did find support we ended up making some kind of a decent move you know since 2019 every time we have broken out of this level found support we have also have gotten some kind of action you know most recent being this one which was the smallest reaction that we had um so for now this is okay but you know watch out in case we do get an impulse on btc it is possible that alts may lag but what you have to understand like as they discussed last time we have only a very small sample size from the previous the previous moves of btc in 2014 15 and essentially what we should be expecting something different each time guys you know when you have such small sample sizes things never really repeat exactly the same way you know because that is what the crowd can see and the market is never going to do that you know the market is always going to you know discount what is obvious and you always end up making money when you find an idea that is more unexpected you know that is the rule of the market it's a very primary rule of the market so do understand that do keep that in mind uh, whatever everybody is expecting especially all season right now you know maybe it is a uh, it is time when it will be time the thing is that's not a scarce idea the sentiment on crypto twitter the bullish sentiment on crypto twitter is actually not a scarce idea you have to understand that because crypto twitter is always bullish so you cannot trade a base a trade on oh cd is bullish so this is you know cd has been bullish about alts all the way since the last 3 years you know so you can see what the scarce idea was so at some point they are going to be right you know so cannot like and essentially we've had you know, two and a half three years of correction and a, a essentially a year of consolidation almost so you know you cannot discount that so for now technically i think this monthly level is a key level you can manage risk off it if we do end up breaking up above it you can manage risk off it and uh, of course it's the c fork is adding confluence to this idea this is look at btc we're drilling down straight to the 4 hour uh, for this um last week we had two plans one was either to get a retest lower and manage our risks from uh, this level you know and basically find a liquidity grab here so or we get a breakout play so what we actually got was the breakout play uh, 9850 was the level that we were looking at so we got a breakout play um, it was a decent 3 or 4% move um, we did get rejected from the monthly level but essentially it's the total market cap that big level on total market cap that i just discussed that's where we got 
a rejection from it was a big rejection um, this is basically an index a volume index so it does not show what bitmex actually took the liquidity from down here as well so essentially if you're trading there you could have taken advantage of that situation but nonetheless just like the total market cap it is a similar situation that we've had uh, we've made an impulse we've made a 618 retrace and now we are consolidating uh, please ignore this trend. this is from a, a daily time frame this trend line that's why it's looking a bit messy but nonetheless it is relevant for now because price has been testing it and holding it we have once we have broken up you can see that we have not had any four hour closes below the monthly open so all of this is pretty bullish guys i think this points to uh, looking for upside and yesterday what we had is a lot of shorts opening on this move down you know and it was it had been a long time since uh, that had happened we had about 30 million 35 million of shorts opening on this move down and they instantly were taken out you know so i don't think this is the place to be shorting if you want to start looking for downside essentially you should do that once price has taken this level out and that too just for these levels but for now you're looking for places to manage your risk for upside you know so this is a great place to manage your risk and if you ended up um, this is where you're looking to build a long position it is very legit and we have a similar game plan for this like the total market cap essentially we should be looking at these retrace levels right here and for price to either hold this 4 hour level you know so this is a pretty good level this 4 hour level 9600 so if you do want price should at least hold this but nonetheless this is another significant demand zone so nonetheless this monthly open till we are trading and not closing below this i do not see the reason to start looking for some kind of a move you know i think if we do still end up closing monthly open then that's when uh, it reflects weakness but nonetheless there is demand here this 9150 level is a big big level you know it has a uh, uh, VWAPs it's a monthly level it's a very big range I have spoken about this before in case you have not seen this you can just look at any of the previous videos but nonetheless guys so this is all just pointing out to the fact that um, you know there is support there is demand this was big sell right here but if you uh, if you use any of the 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 volume platforms like tensor charts you would know that there was a lot of absorption a lot of buying came in over here you know at these lower levels on bitmex especially we had big market buying at 88.50 87.50 and essentially either that could be arbitrage because a lot of the other um, a lot of the other leverage exchanges did not break below this 91.50 but nonetheless there was very big demand right here which neutralized all of the liquidations and all of the selling so for now guys that's what it is you know the, everything is pointing to the fact that demand has been created we have been consolidating here and the logic of getting a bigger retrace um, I have discussed it as well so just keep a look out at this um, there is also a a couple of fractals um, we will look at one of them that we also looked at last time um, all of them point to these levels holding just just find a place to manage your risk you know you're looking for upside find a place to manage your risk you cannot be foaming here because nonetheless if you saw the total market cap chart we have big resistance here you know so just never fomo into resistance guys i mean if someone was fomoing you did not catch that 9850 breakout play someone is fomoing up here you there is always a big probability that you can get punished for it you know so at big resistance you still have to find uh, significant support levels where you want to manage your risk so here's the fractal we were looking at this last time as well 
and why i like this fractal so much is because it has very similar psychology you know it's a, it's a move off of a major low you know this 2015 low you can see the percentage also surprisingly or not so surprisingly is very similar and what we got is a big move then a long period of consolidation at resistance which was rejected and essentially everybody who was over leveraged um, at this level was taken out and then we did end up still consolidating below that resistance for quite a long period of time you know again and again taking out all the over leveraged longs so you can see something similar that that is going on we got our initial first big rejection then we got the same consolidation where people again over leveraged themselves they were taken out uh, last week at the starting of the month we we got a similar reaction you know people fomoing and you could see the open interest on this move up and while we were consolidating the open interest was really really rising you know there was a lot of longs opening up because everybody decided yes 10k is broken and you know this is going to be the be all and end all so you, you could see a lot of people opening big positions at these higher levels and you know all of them basically got flushed out and you can see i mean essentially there is still potential for more flushes like that's what the market was doing the market does not want you to stick on you know you you can stay on if you find not when you're building positions up here you can stay on when you're catching these wicks or you know you you understand where these levels are you, you can come down and manage uh, manage your risk from these lower levels you know so guys when you have chop and sideways your momentum indicators are going to stop to work all your trend lines are going to start breaking you know you'll start making uh, pennants and you know all kinds of triangles that will just get taken out but essentially this is what is still going on you know and i mean this is this is what is potentially going on and for that you know you you find nice levels you, you find nice levels to manage your risk and uh, buy the wicks not the not the top guys you know but here's another reflection of what is potentially happening what i would say is that monthly level 9100 gets taken out and you know essentially we're building a different kind of structure but for now you manage your risk and um, allow price to do what it has to you know because if you are very actively trying to trade this i think you're pretty much getting chopped up right here and also getting frustrated you know you need alerts you need you need uh, specific levels where you can have those alerts and watch price you know because if you're going to watch paint dry it not only will it bore you it will make you make emotional decisions so you know know when to wait and know when to pull the trigger guys the the timing of your execution is very critical especially when markets are doing this you know because you get over leverage yourself when markets are doing this the market will take your money you buy at the wrong time the market will take your money so it's very essential you, you time it well you know you find places to manage risk and take your risk you, you will be more relaxed because you will know your points of negation and uh, everything will just be left to play out as it has to we're looking at the dow gold and you can see the last three weeks have been really, really strong especially last week we had a big move in the dow uh, obviously this sector rotation going on so financials and a few other sectors which are to do with the Dow aviation they did really well and uh, you know caught up with technology and what we, we are looking at is uh, where potentially this bounce can give us a reaction so if we zoom out you can see that this entire move we've had a 618 retrace a perfect 618 retrace and currently we're making the first bounce out of that and uh, what we have is the 618 on the other side which is a monthly level it's a big monthly level you know right here where we got a big rejection from 2016 and built the base for the next move or the 786 which is a big weekly level you can see you know you had flat weekly which turned uh, which was resistance and eventually it turned support until it finally broke 
so these are the two big levels on the Dow Gold chart where we can be expecting a reaction but until then uh, we will look at Nasdaq and see that we do have place to manage risk for the upside as well even though it looks very aggressive but most of all I think in this market uh, you need to keep your bias out you need to leave whatever it is that you you know you, you you keep in your mind I, I will show you some statistics to understand that as well especially if you are living in the US so for now this is the game plan you know these are the couple of levels set your alerts here and uh, let's see what price does this is another very significant trend line so you should expect some kind of reaction from here nonetheless this is the last three weeks very strong price a very risk on environment and uh, it should be treated as such and allow price to do that guys so this is another very big weekly level you can see right here and we've just taken it out <clears throat> so if price can find come down and find support here you do know this potential for a uh, continuation in this rally so the nasdaq this is exactly what uh, the daily block we were looking at <clears throat> where price needed to find support so we did not only find support we made a strong move outside of that the weekly close was very strong on this and essentially we made new all-time highs we have made new all-time highs in multiple sectors uh, semiconductors is the most noteworthy uh, essentially you have to understand guys that semiconductors are used in many many different applications so like we used to have transports leading in the past think semiconductor semiconductors is the new market leader is the new uh, decider of direction you know and if something that is being used in multiple industries is leading the market you do know that whatever it is the market is um, is showing strength you know when your leaders are showing strength but also the theme that we discussed last week that everything that was lagging all your small caps all your value stocks they have all made very very good moves over the last week so all of this excellent market breadth it is suggesting that you know first of all of course the bottom is in but not only that um, all algorithms have uh, priced in the fact that the bottom is in so you know they they that's why they went for the small caps and the value stocks and i did tell you that the money is actually made by discounting the obvious you know and betting on the unexpected so that is exactly what is going on here you know the all this airline stocks all your cruises they're totally down in the dumps but as soon as there's news of the market reopening you can see they've had 100 percent moves you know 80 percent moves throughout them the small caps are having big 40 50 percent moves so this is what happens guys this, these are the points of maximum opportunity and for now for the nasdaq i think as long as this daily block is holding essentially this 95 60 95 70 level i mean we do still have potential of upside or even if uh, you know tech starts to lag a little there is individual stocks and individual sectors that are still continuously giving multiple opportunities So here we're looking at the largest 50 day rallies and what you can see is the 2020 rally is now the largest 50 day rally ever you know the closest second is in 2009 and the big 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 crash and what we know is the past big rallies they lead to continued strength look at the one month three month and the six month statistics uh, you know the six month statistics I mean essentially most of them are uh, almost above 5% the medium would po possibly be about 8 to 9% so essentially this is what this is reflecting you know this is bullish guys the market has priced in whatever has to happen and uh, okay we can get the second wave of the virus but you know um, that is not something that will essentially define a lot of other things that drive a market you know 
And I told you last time, what are the forces that drive a market? It is to have enough people to be on the wrong side. And you do know that mentally there was just so many people who were skeptical, you know, because they were using fundamentals to trade something that is very technical. And all of those people not only got left out, they, I think, have lost money because most of the people in disbelief have been shorting the market. And that is the exact reason for the rise to be the kind that it is. You know, there is enough fuel on the wrong side of this trade for it to do what it had to. And and it's done that the market has proven itself again that the crowd will always be wrong. You know, the psychology of the crowds will always be on the wrong side. There is continuous fear and that will get used against you. You know, so just remember that do not let your emotions and your bias get into the way of technicals and to see what you are trading. So here is a statistic I wanted to share with you because I know that many people are shocked why stocks are not down after one of the worst civil unrests we have seen in America. This is essentially in decades, you know, people are angry. First of all, people are angry that prices are not confirming their grim narrative, you know, so that anger is essentially what is, you know, moving price. But what else we have is this simple statistic about how this has happened before. What we are looking at is the S&P 500. And this is, uh, this is the 60s, you know, and essentially, the year that we are highlighting is 1968. And 1968 was one of the worst uh, civil unrest and a very chaotic a political environment you know we had uh, Martin Luther King who was assassinated Robert Kennedy who was assassinated we had the Tet Offensive DNC protests and all of this while the market was rising you know so everybody who has and this is a 7% rise over the, over a year you know in a place where the trend was not as strong as it should have been but nonetheless the thing is that we had a very, very chaotic environment, you know, essentially much more chaotic than what we do. And the market rose 7% because of the same dynamics, you know, essentially there's just enough people to feed upside, you know, and there's just enough people to be on the wrong side of this trade. So just remember this guys, do not ever forget this in case you lost money in this market, in case you just sat out do remember to keep your emotions out of it to keep what is happening around you outside of it the market is about supply and demand the market is about scarcity the market is going to keep the crowd out and prove as many people wrong as they can you know so this is uh, very essential and uh, this is something that we have previous proof of as well so just keep keep a look out at these guys and uh, do remember what the dynamics of the market are, what the mechanics of the market are. So here we're looking at the timeline of uh, the daily um, COVID related deaths, you know, worldwide. This is from the 10th of March. And you can see what we actually plotting is a seven day rolling average of the daily new deaths. So, you know, we uh, we have ordered this from the maximum deaths people who the the countries that are suffering the most and you can see it's uh, essentially the big ones are mexico india and these are the ones that are bringing in big numbers you know they're essentially still in the acceleration phase of their first waves you know their first waves have not finished yet but what what else we want to look at is the other factors you know about what what is actually happening across other places which have had their first waves. Most importantly, what we want to look at is the world index. You know, so this is the world index and you can see this is the first wave that we've had. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in further onto this chart. So this is the world index chart. And what I want to show you most specifically is that we have already bottomed out right here. And you can see that there is already a slight rise in the cases. So this is just for us to be timing this, you know, so you can understand that 
the bottom has come in at least the first bottom has come in and we are beginning to rise from what is that first bottom so we have to see whether this just continues or you know comes back again to form another bottom and then eventually rise but nonetheless this is significantly most significantly what i wanted to show you and uh, you can see that some places have had past second waves most of all iran is starting to reflect that you know because iran was one of the earlier candidates you can see along with italy iran was one of the earlier candidates and we have had what we can see is kind of like a double bottom structure and now prices uh, i mean sorry now the, the average is rising again so uh, this is reflecting uh, the potential for that second leg you can see in uk again we have bottomed out rising you know so if this continues to rise you can you can know you can track this in uh, <coughs> world o meters you know that is uh, uh, sorry it's not world o meters i would it's the our world in data that is the website and you can track this there live and so you know this is a, it's a very nice chart to look at and think it's very clear and essentially what we're looking at is the second wave and uh, its effects and how that will affect the economies but if if the markets have bottoms which all the statistics are showing what you should have is a list of um staying inside stocks and a list of getting back out stocks so lockdown and no lockdown so lockdown stocks are all your technology based stocks your healthcare stocks the ones which rose initially you know and now we the stocks that are rising are the ones that are no lockdown stocks you know like your airlines and cruises and <coughs> financials so you should know that if the second wave starts to reach its peak you will see the lockdown stocks um, start trending and gaining strength and the vice versa you know once things start to open up again so this is how this entire metric is going to shift and how the tides are going to be turned and how this market at least that's how i feel that it is going to be managed so this is the play guys you know track this and uh, get in before um, others you know this is where you will find the scarcity because this will be real time and the news will come later and retail will follow after so uh, big congratulations first of all guys if you were catching this you catching the rice futures with us because this is when we had first mentioned it at about 16 dollars and you can see that it has had one of its most impulsive moves that it has had in its entire history so this was a really really big move we track it and this is just on the 4 hour you know so this has happened exactly from when we mentioned it to uh, within the 10 days you know that it was mentioned and we have had a smashing 45 46% move and essentially what you would be looking for is these highs right here on the monthly time frame you know so currently for me personally i am fully out of this trade and looking to see what market what the market does because this was a very strong rejection you know it was a, it was a kind of like what looks like it was potentially a blow off top you know so we we want price to build some kind of structure now to see but essentially this big big move has taken place congrats if you were following along and you were ma you managed to get a part of this action there was a couple of places where you could have been managing your risk to catch this essentially when at the end of last week there was a structure on a very low time frame because it was strongly trending there was a couple of structures which you could have gotten to catch this big move so for now um, i mean th this is what the plan is to just wait and watch for structure because essentially this looks like this move could potentially be over we we'll get we'll, looks very blow off top which you can see the new opening is a, a minus 7% but nonetheless congrats if you caught this with us so gold we were we were thinking about the fact that it would be it might be that uh, you know since the markets are going so strong risk on 
that gold is going to be taking a hit and we are back to this 2013 big 2013 yearly open this is the first second and the third test of this and essentially if the risk on markets are to take another move up it is possible that this may have been it for gold and for now we do come back below this 2013 yearly open if you are long this is essentially still just the place to manage risk and uh, you know allow price to do what it has to from here but do know that since the markets are making all-time highs uh, a lot of the market is you know getting out of this uh, getting out of this asset class though many fear the the potential inflation that is to come so there is still demand but just watch out for these levels on gold if you found this video helpful please give it a thumbs up and go ahead and share it with someone else and if you have any questions about what we covered today please leave them in the comments and i will be sure to get back to you or answer them in my next video for more trading content and education go ahead and click on the video on your right thanks for watching guys and cheers